Okay, so all we have done so far, so it's apparently this is all of you that are coming. Um, I don't know if y'all, we haven't seen Marquis for a while, but I know he's been signing in for other classes. So you may want to remind him he does have an algebra class too. <laughs> yes, we do have algebra. And then also Cesare as well. So then I'm used to Yanelli being late, but we want to talk about it. All right. So, so far <laughs> what we've done is we've done these two problems. These are the ones that I'd asked for you to do yesterday. Okay. You're supposed to have tried 32 because it was like number 31. The events were mutually exclusive. And then you were supposed to have tried 36. It was like num number 35. They were not mutually exclusive because a pen is also a writing utensil. A phone is also an electronic device. So you couldn't count the things twice. You had to subtract something back off. Okay, so that's the difference between the exclusive and not exclusive. So we got two more on that page, number 39 and 40. So we'll get those set up real quick and then we'll do 11 too. So on 39, it says a kitchen shelf holds five red plates, six blue plates, three green cups, and eight red cups. Apparently they don't like any dishes to match. So, part A, a blue item or a green item is chosen. How many items are there total? You gotta figure that out first. How many things are on the shelf total? Eight, 11. Is it 22? Yep. There's 22 total. Okay, how many things are blue? Um, six. So you got six out of 22 that are blue. And then how many are green? Three. Three. So I got six over 22 and three over 22. So, is it going to be blue and green at the same time? No. No, because it didn't say any of them had more than one color on it. So is this mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Uh, mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive, because it if it's one, it definitely can't be the other. Okay, so you just add that together. Six plus three is nine. So I have nine over 22. <clears throat> that equals point four zero nine. Decimal four zero nine. Okay. Now, um, part B. It says a plate. How many plates are there total? Eleven. Okay, you got eleven out of twenty-two plates, or a red item. So you, what all's red? Five. Uh, five plates. You have five red plates, but you also have eight red cups. Eight red so cups. How many red items are there? There are 12, 13. 13. 13. 13. Thirteen. Okay. So could it be a plate and also be red? Yes. Yes. So how many red plates did I have? Five. Five. So I have to subtract them back off. They can't be counted. So this was mutually exclusive on the first part. This is not because I have plates that are also red. So I have to subtract back off on this one. So 11 plus 13 is 24. 24 minus five. 19. Is 19. So you have 19 divided by 22. You get your decimal. Eight, six, four. And it's gonna be a four because after the three would be an eight, I mean a six again, because it's the six and the four that repeats. So it makes it go up. Okay, part C, a cup or a blue item. How many cups are on the shelf? 11. There's 11 cups on the shelf. How many blue items are on the shelf? 
Six. Six. Are any of the cups blue? Uh, no. No. So this one is mutually If it's one, it's not the other. It can't be a blue cup because there are no blue cups. So I don't have to subtract on this one. So I add these together. Get 17 over 22. Point seven seven three. Three because the seven would make the two go up. Okay. Y'all got that? Did we do it right? Hope so. You hope so? All right. So number 40, you get the idea how this is working? Yep. Okay. So on number 40, It says, individual sports pictures are used on the school yearbook cover. The boys soccer team had 18 members. The girls soccer team had 12 members. The golf team had five boys and three girls as members. A photograph of a girl or a golf team member is chosen. So first of all, we need to see how many there are all together. So 18 plus 12 plus five plus three. 35. Hmm? 35. Hmm? 38. 38. There we go. We got 38 people all together, okay? So 38's our total. So it says a girl. How many are girls? The girls volleyball team had 12, and then there's three girls on the golf team. So there's 15 girls. Out of 38, okay. Then it said a girl or a golf team member. How many golf team members are there? Eight. Eight out of 38. But are some of the golf team members girls? Yeah. Yes, so this is not mutually exclusive. We'll have to subtract off some, okay. So how many girls play golf? Three. Three. We have to subtract three off of there. Okay. So 15 plus eight minus three. 15 plus eight. 23. 23 minus, minus three. three. 20. 20. Over 38. Never mind. Somebody was. Point five two six. Okay. Yay. All right, part B. A photograph of a boy. So how many boys are there? 18 on the soccer team. Five more to get off. So that's 23. 23. Or a member of the volleyball team. How many are on the volleyball team? 12. Well, now, the volleyball team is all girls. The first one was boys. So can it be a boy and a girl at the same time? No. No. So these are mutually exclusive. So I don't have to subtract anything on this one. I just add them. So 23 plus 12. 35. 35 divided by 38. Y'all agree with that? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay, last one. A photograph of a member of the soccer team. So the soccer team had 18 members. So I have 18 over 38 for the soccer team. Or a member of the golf team. How many are on the golf team? Eight. Eight on the golf team. So. Does it say anything about any of the soccer team members playing golf? No. No, so that's also mutually exclusive. So I don't have to subtract anything. I just add those together. 
So 18 plus 8? 26. That's what I wrote. Over 38. Point six eight four. Eight four. Okay. So that's mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. Kind of get the idea of that. Yes? Yeah. Or no. Okay. Now, what we're getting ready to do in the next section <laughs> is multiple events. Okay. <coughs> Multiple events. Okay, so with what we were doing before on these that we were doing, it usually said, What's the chance of getting an electronic device or a book or a soccer team member or a golf team member? It had the word or. The ones that we're starting now is wanting both of them, so it's going to have the word and. Okay. So instead of or, we're going to have and. All right. So it's on page 510 and 511, but I'm going to read through a little bit of something with you first. Okay. There's two new words that we need to know. Independent, which if you all think about independent, does everybody know what independent means? Independent. Yeah. You're on your own. You don't put it on somebody else, right? Independent. Dependent, you depend on your parents to have a house. You depend on them to feed you, okay? To provide food for you. So you're a dependent, okay? So independent is on your own. Dependent relies on something else, okay? So those are our two type of things we're talking about in section 11 too. <laughs> Independent events you multiply the probability of each one occurring together, okay? So you find out the chances of getting like the red marble out of the bag, you find the chances of getting the blue marble out of the bag, and you multiply the fractions together. On the ones we did yesterday, we were adding fractions, we're multiplying, okay? Now, the thing is you do the same concept with dependent events, but if I pull a marble out of the bag, let's say there's 10 marbles in the bag. If I pull one out, do I have as many to choose from the second time I go in to pull a marble out of the bag? No. No, there's only nine now. So does that change my chances? Yes. Yes, so that's a dependent event because what I pulled out the first time impacts or affects what I can get the second time. So that's what we're looking at first, is just trying to tell the difference between independent, one has no impact on what you get the next time, or dependent, one impacts what you can get the second time. Okay, so that's what we're doing on number one and two on page 510. So everybody's on page 510. I'm sure yeah. my book, my little binder things, getting on my nerves. All right, so here we go. It says in number one, John has a collection of pencils with 10 blue, three yellow, one green, and six red. I'm not quite sure why he collects pencils, but there you go. In part A, it says three consecutive yellow pencils are chosen with replacement. So that means he has all of his pencils in a little basket. Okay, here, see I got them. Here's my little basket of markers. Okay, I pull out a yellow one. I put it back. Do I still have the same chance of getting the yellow one again? Yeah. Yeah, because there's still the same number of yellow ones. There's just still the same total in here. So since I put it back in, does it impact what I got the first time on any of the other times? No. So that is? Independent. Independent. Because the fact that I got a yellow the first time has no impact on me getting a yellow the second time and me getting a yellow the third time because I always have the same number of pencils to choose from. Part B says I pull a blue pencil and a red pencil are chosen without replacement. So if I pull a blue one out and I keep it out and then I go to pick a red one, 
Does it change my chances? Yes. Yes, because there's less pencils to choose from. So that is? Dependent. Dependent. Okay, pretty easy. And yeah. dependent, you put it back in. You have the same number of choices. Dependent, you don't have the same number of choices because you kept it out. Okay, so like if you take, <laughs> say, you have a box of donuts and you pick a donut, if you eat it, do you have as many donuts to choose from the next time you go to the box of donuts? No. No. Okay, so you've changed your chances of getting like a chocolate donut out of the box. So, same concept. Number two, a drawer has seven spoons, three forks, nine steak knives, and two butter knives. Part A, four consecutive spoons are chosen without replacement. So I take a spoon out of the drawer, I let somebody use it. I take another spoon out of the drawer, I let somebody use it. So is that independent or dependent? Dependent. Dependent, because I have less spoons and less utensils to choose from every time I go back to the drawer. Okay, part B, a fork and a steak knife and a butter knife are chosen with replacement. So I grab something out of the drawer, it's a fork, that's not what I wanted, I put it back in. I dry something else out, I get a steak knife, that's not what I was looking for, I put it back in. So since I'm putting it back in every time. Independent. It's independent. Okay, so from what I was saying with those, hopefully you kind of get the idea how we're going to have to set up our fractions when we're doing the probabilities for these. <laughs> okay, so we did one and two, now we're skipping to number five. Number five says, Mark has a collection of 21 blue stones, four red stones, seven yellow stones, and nine purple stones. Okay? Nice. Let's just read down through there real quick. If you look at part A, B, C, and D, they all end with two words. With replacement. With replacement. So that means all of those are gonna be what? Dependent. Independent. They're all going to be independent because you're putting it back in every time. Okay. How many stones does he have total? 21. Huh? 21? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. 25. 25. Forty-one. Forty-one. There we go. So there's 41 total. So on part A, it says two consecutive yellow stones. So that means you're picking out a yellow one, you're putting it back in, and then you're picking out a yellow one again. So how many yellow were in there? Uh, seven. So I have seven out of 41 times seven out of 41. Remember on these, you multiply the fractions. You multiply the fractions on these. You multiply the fractions on these. Okay? So you get the idea? Yep. Now, we talked before, most of you have your calculator, you can multiply them out, right? I'm more worried about right now that you know how to set it up. Then we'll go back and worry about typing a couple of minutes and getting the answers, okay? Because I want to just focus on making sure we get them set up right first. With our time, make sure we get through those, okay? So on part B, it says your chances of getting a blue and then a red. So probability of blue than red, how many red blue ones are there? 21. There's 21 blue ones. And, and then how many red? Four. So that's what you would multiply for part B. Okay, like I said, right now, I'm just worried about getting them written. Okay, everybody good with that? We're just trying to get them written right now. Part C says a blue and then a purple. So probability of blue 
and purple. So blue, we already said, was 21 out of 41. How many purple stones are in there? Nine. Nine. So you have 21 over 41 times nine over 41. Okay. And same directions went with these. You can round to three places for your decimal when you need to. And then part D, it said a blue, a red, and a yellow are chosen in that order with replacement. So you got probability of blue, yellow, red. So blue was 21 out of 41. How many red ones were there? I mean yellow. Whoops. Four. I mean, uh, sorry, seven. Seven yellows, and then how many red? That was the four, right? Four, yeah. So you put those fractions in order, you multiply all three of them together. Okay? So you get the idea of independent. It's very similar to what we did yesterday, except instead of adding, you are multiplying. <laughs> Just like the other day. Remember, we multiplied, like if I have five shirts, Three pairs of pants, two pairs of shoes. I can do five times three times two to see how many outfits I can make out of those clothes. This is seeing how many possible outcomes you can get when you pick a blue one, a yellow one, a red one. You're multiplying them together. Now on number six, if you read down through there, are they independent or dependent? Uh independent because it says what magic words with replacement with replacement so on number six it's going to be the same way you're putting them back in again okay so it says jessica has a collection of coins she has 15 pennies 12 nickels 20 dimes and 18 quarters these people collect weird things so we add it all together Anybody get a total? Nobody's got a total? 65. There's 65 total. Okay, so for part A, it's she picks a quarter, puts it back, picks another quarter. So probability of a quarter and a quarter. Okay, there are 18 quarters. So I have 18 over 65 times 18 over 65. Because since I put the first quarter back in before I draw again, I still have 18 to choose from. Okay, part B, what are she picking out? Pennies and then, a, or a penny and then a dime. So penny and then dime. So penny, there was 15. Out of 65, dime, there was 20 out of 65. 20. And there's still 65 coins to choose from because after she puts the first one out, she looks at it, she puts it back in. Okay, part C, a nickel. And then a dime. So there are 12 nickels. So 12 out of 65. And 20 out of 65. That's what you multiply together. And then D, three quarters and then a penny. So for this one, you have probability of a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and then a penny. Okay, so how many quarters were there? Uh, 18. So you pick out a quarter, you get that first one, 18 on 65, you put it back in. Okay, next one, 18 on 65, put it back in. Next one, 18 on 65, put it back in. And then a penny, there were 15 pennies. So 15 out of 65. So that's your fractions that you would multiply together. Okay, remember our goal right now is just figuring out what we're doing. Let's look at number nine. That's the next one, right? 
Number nine and then number 10. <laughs> number nine says, Timothy has a deck of cards that contains one card for each number zero through nine. <clears throat> Read through them real quick. What do they all end with? <clears throat> Without replacement. Without replacement. So these are all going to be dependent. Dependent. So after I pull something out, I won't have as many to choose from the next time. Okay, because they're dependent. All right. So on number nine, it says he gets a four and then a zero. So probability of getting a four and then zero. So each card, each number is in there just one time. So how many cards are in there? 10. 10, because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's 10 cards. So his chance of getting a four is one out of four. No, all my markers are One done. out of 10. That's what I said. One out of 10. And then his chance of getting a zero is one out of? Nine. Nine, because you don't have as many cards left because you kept out the first one. So you've got to remember on dependent that it counts down. Okay, let's do the next one. Number 9B says a three and then an eight three and then eight. So you have one chance out of 10 and then one chance out of nine. Nine. Okay, so a lot of these will end up being the same thing because each card is only in there one time. One time. If you had cards that were in there more, then it would be different, but each card's just there once. Part C, a seven and then a three. So is it gonna be the same? Yeah. You have one chance in 10 of getting a seven, then there's one chance in the nine remaining to get a three. Okay. Part D. Part D says a one, a two, and a three are chosen in that order. So you're picking a one, a two, and then a three. So the chance of getting one is one out of 10. Chance of getting two would be one out of? Nine. Nine, chance of getting a three would be one, one out, out of eight. eight. Because I have a, one less card every time I go to draw. There. Can you see them all now? Okay, pretty easy? Yeah. All right, so same basic concept on number 10. <clears throat> okay. So on number 10, it's gonna be dependent again, right? Because they all say without replacement. So again, these are dependent. Without replacement, okay? So part A says probability, let's see. Well, let's read it first. I didn't even read the first part. Now the marker will write on my hand, but it won't write on the board. Explain that to me. Okay, <clears throat> see look, Science. big black mark, mm -hmm. isn't that pretty, mm, yeah, see? All right, number 10, Kathy is trying to pick which shoes to pack for vacation. She has five pairs of tennis shoes, three pairs of dress shoes, three pairs of casual shoes, and two pairs of sandals. I don't know why you need five pairs of tennis shoes, but anyway, it's Bowling. Two consecutive pairs of tennis shoes are chosen without replacement. So she picks a pair of tennis shoes. How many shoes are there total? Thirteen. Okay, you all agree with them? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so she's got five pair of tennis shoes first out of the thirteen. And then how many tennis shoes does she still have to pick from? If she picked out the first pair of tennis shoes, there are only four left out of the 12 remaining. 
So our top number had to count down two because I had more than, I had five pairs of tennis shoes. So if the first one's a pair of tennis shoes, I keep it out. So then I have less tennis shoes to pick from, right? Everybody got it? Yeah. Right. What? What? What are you doing? I just said, yeah. Oh, okay. You're making like odd faces at me. Part B. Okay, part B says tennis shoes and then dress shoes. So how many tennis shoes are there? Five out of 13. Five out of 13, how many dress shoes? Three out of 12. Out of 12. Okay, part C, probability of getting tennis shoes and then casual shoes. So for tennis shoes, it's five out of 13. Casual shoes, there were? Three out of 12. Out of 12. And then part D, it says that she picks a pair of casual shoes and then sandals and sandals. As I said, both pairs of sandals. So she's picking sandals twice. So you're gonna have how many fractions? Three. Three. How many pairs of casual? Uh, three out of 13. 13, after she picks them, she has two pairs of sandals out of the remaining 12. After she's picked the first pair of sandals, there's only one left. One pair of sandals left out of the 11 remaining pairs of shoes. Okay. So do you get the difference between mutually exclusive, not mutually exclusive, and independent and dependent? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does everybody know what's supposed to happen? Did anybody pay attention to the lesson plan for the week? Well, it's a quiz, right? Very good. Let's go. Okay. The quiz is in Procrofts. The quiz will be there until class time tomorrow. So you have from now until one o'clock tomorrow to take it. Okay. Yeah. So if you get on there and you're like, whoa, I don't remember any of this, and then you wanna to try to like send me a message or something and ask for help, then I have time to answer you and reset it for you to go back in, okay? So it's between now and one o'clock tomorrow. What quiz How number is it? that up close and personal, Yanelli? What quiz number is it? <laughs> what was that? It's, well, I don't know. I think it's 35, does that sound right, or 36, hang on. Well, where's the, the quiz 36? I don't know. You don't? Bear. What are you doing? Hey, I don't know, bear. I don't know. <laughs> it's quiz 36, okay? Hi. Quiz 36, everybody good? You know what, you got your stuff down from today? Okay, yeah. now we didn't finish multiplying these out, but all of you all told me you've, you've got a calculator you can use, so can you handle that? You yeah. In. Okay, I was more worried about you knowing how to set them up. Okay, so make sure that's done. Make sure that you tell your friends who don't bother to come to class. <clears throat> What's going on? Remind them that we do have Algebra 2 every afternoon on Tuesday through Friday. At what time, Yanelli? At 1. At 1. Not 105. Not 110. Start at when? At 1. 1. Okay. At so, go. Do your quiz after you do Spanish. Well, the girls, y'all don't have to do Spanish, so you can go work on quiz now. 
or you can make sure this is done or any of the other work that you haven't finished for me. Mm -hmm. Micah, I'm not looking at you. So make sure you get everything done. Don't forget about the quiz. I finished all the work. Okay. Bye. Tell my. Bye.